Hello learners, uh, welcome to our session today. I am your instructor CPA Ringo Frederick. In our class today, my good students, we are going to look at a very important concept in uh, the whole uh, course of uh, auditing and assurance, which will form a basis of whatever that you are going to report as at the end of the day. So today's class, my good students, I want us to talk about internal control system. I know that it's not the first time that uh, we're hearing this term, the aspect of internal control system. But at this point, I want us to approach it in a very, very practical uh, manner so that you should also be able to understand the whole idea of uh, internal control. So to start with, even maybe before we go to the whole concept of internal control in relation to audit, I want us to take it practically. You're having your phone there. This phone of yours, you'll find that uh, you might decide to maybe uh, put uh, a pattern on uh, your phone. Before you open your phone, maybe you decide that this is my pattern. Or in other case, maybe you decide to put uh, a password. Or you can decide to put uh, probably a pin. So that at no any given point, not anyone can just access probably the content in your phone. Or maybe as they normally tend to say, uh, maybe you find that a wife or a husband, each person has a password on his or a phone and the other party does not know. It's not supposed to be like that. As much as you're protecting the content, it should be open, right? It should be open. So uh, basically, these are what you're terming it as. A, so in this case, we find that this individual has instituted a certain control on his phone. Not any other person can just access the phone content, right? In that case, again, you find that uh, your bank, right? You can't just go and withdraw, as much as I'm having your, your card, ATM card, I can't just go and withdraw cash from your, from your account if I don't have a PIN. There is a authentication that you put into place that is a PIN. So for me to withdraw this cash, I have to insert a certain, a certain PIN. These are controls that you've instituted in your account, right? The same case whenever you're talking of uh, all these states person, all these, uh, they normally term them as a VIP in the society. You'll find that uh, as at the end of the day, probably in their houses, you'll find that uh, even in their offices, you can't just go in and see that person. First of all, you'll have to go through a thorough security checker, probably at the entrance. Maybe we're having a, say, like a security personnel at the entrance. This person will have to whisk you about even before you proceed. When you read the office again, probably you find a, a secretary, whom this secretary probably will forward you to personal assistant. The personal assistant will kind of uh, give you a permission to either see uh, this person or not seeing this person. So basically, these are controls that have been instituted. And the good question would be, why should we institute all these controls? simply because we are protecting something very important if it is if it is phone <laughs> the content in the phone very important to us your bank account of course your way of money money of course can't be enough so i'll have to protect whatever i'm having i'll have to instill that pin this important uh term them in course the vip in the society you'll find that uh Probably the whole uh, certain secret, government secrets, the whole uh, very important, probably uh, classified information that they must be protected at any given point in time so that whoever sees this person already, he has kind of been uh, vetted completely. So what you are trying to do, Molimu is trying to give us all this illustration to have a wider idea of what control basically is. We are putting or rather we are instituting this form of control to basically protect something very useful or very important in whichever angle that you're looking at. Bank, phone, persons, we are protecting something very important. So I want you to now relate this idea and this concept now in auditing. Also in auditing, you'll find that uh, as at the end of the day, the auditor need to give a true and fair view of the affairs of the company and in this case i'll be reporting this to the users of financial statements in this case we are talking of say for example shareholders i'll be reporting this to the government 
which at the end of the day you find that it will also be a very vital uh, document or report which will enable investors to make various decisions. So, meaning that that information is also very important. And what will increase the credibility of this information? Among the items that will increase the credibility of this information, of course, is the control systems instituted by the management. So what I want us to agree here is that uh, these internal control systems in auditing, the, it's not the work of the auditor to institute these controls, but rather it is the work of the management. So this is the whole idea or concept of what internal control will constitute. So now come back to our case. What is internal control then in auditing? So internal control is simply refers to the whole system of controls. And this one I want to repeat it very, very careful. If need be, I'm going to put it down so that it should sink at the back of my mind clearly. So this point you are talking of, we are talking of uh, uh, ICS uh, is simply ICS. In this case, you're looking at it as uh, it refers to the whole system 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 of controls refers to the whole system of controls of course uh, that is of course financial financial or otherwise financial or otherwise that is financial and financial put in place by the management, 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 to ensure what? To ensure that, to ensure that, number one, to ensure that, number one, Business is conducted in an orderly and efficient manner. These are the policies that we'll be having, of course, to ensure that, number one, business is conducted in an orderly and efficient manner. Number two, the assets of the organizations are safeguarded. Number three, there is adherence to the management policies. The other number to secure as far as possible completeness and accuracy of financial information. The other key element you can talk about is also to safeguarding of assets which you've looked at it. So basically all these are reasons why we should institute controls within our organization. And that's why Molimu is clearly saying here is that this refers to the whole system of controls, financial or otherwise. So whenever you have others, basically you have done financial, financial or otherwise, put in place by the management to ensure that first of all, we've uh, of course protected our assets, organization's assets. We've uh, kind of uh, make sure that business is conducted in an orderly and efficient manner to secure as far as possible, probably completeness and accuracy of financial information, which is very vital. Also to make sure that there is adherence to the management policies. You'll find that now this has cut all across from finance, from how the workers are working, talk about from uh, the policies that are there within our organization, uh, talking about aspect of uh, relationship with our clients and all that. That's why we'll be having human resource dealing with all disciplinary uh, cases within the, within, the, within the organization. These are controls that you are setting in place. So basically, this is a what we are looking at what as ICS. What I want us to always have in mind is that uh, it is not the duty of the auditor to institute internal control system in the organization, but rather it is the duty of the organization. And as I said, as I started, uh, as I stated earlier on, why will we need these controls? Because of the reasons that we've given. And you'll find that such cases will be brought about by the concept of what? Audit risk. If you can recall my good students where we mentioned that audit risk basically will always be equal to 
uh, the inherent risks times, uh, of course, uh, detection risks, and of course, times control risks. If you can recall this, that for us to have this audit risk, of course, I'd be having the inherent risks as a result of the general environment risks that will occur as a result of the general environment within which you're operating. Detection risks, probably uh, whatever that type of procedures that I'm using will fail to detect the risks uh, and uh, of course uh, material misstatements within organization and of course control risk which is very key control risk now it is a risk that the control systems instituted by the management will not detect will not prevent the errors and frauds to do or to occur and that is where our focus will be as a result of this control system that we've instituted in the organization i'll still have material misstatement and this will happen if of course we are having weaknesses in this internal control system in the organization and that's why you'll find that ICS is a very key component for an auditor while conducting an audit work because it will depend how much reliance an auditor will placed in the ICS. Of course, if they are weak, I can't place my reliance on this ICS. But if they are strong after we've conducted our control test, you'll find that it will be easy for me to put my reliance on the ICS instituted. That is very important, my good students, to note. That is very, very important for us to note. Now, key element that you must also be having at the back of your mind is to understand the elements of ICS. If I told you asked to define or uh, to look at the elements of ICS, what can you state? Talk about elements of uh, ICS. This is what Molimu will also want us to analyze. Talk about elements of uh, internal control system. Elements of ICS. Elements of ICS. So elements of ICS, we will have the following. We will have the following. Number one, we'll be talking of uh, control environment. Control environment number two we'll be talking of uh, control activities control activities number three we'll be talking of risk assessment and management risk assessment and management Four, we'll be talking about what you are referring to as, uh, of course, uh, information systems and communication. Information uh, systems and uh, communication. Information systems and uh, communication. Uh, also, the other key element we'll also be talking about basically here is what you are referring to as monitoring. Monitoring. So basically, these are uh, the main elements of uh, ICS that is of course control environment control activities uh, risk assessment and management information uh, of course systems and uh, communication talk about monitoring these are main elements that we must always tend to have at the back of our mind I want us to dissect each one of them so that as at the end of the day we should be able to understand the whole of these items. So we are going to start with element number one, see what it entails and dissect it further for us to have a clear knowledge of the same. That would be number one. It would be very important for us to uh, uh, to note uh, that is of course control environment. Control environment, control environment, control environment. It will be very important for us to understand what control environment entails. What control environment it tells because at this point i want us to dissect and understand the whole of this concept to a manner that even if at all for the purpose of exams maybe you see a question 
they are, you won't be having a hard task because the whole idea is not about cramming. The whole idea is about us understanding the whole process. And once you are able to do this, you'll find that getting these concepts, things will always be very, very easy. You can handle anything. You can handle any question. Practically, you can also apply the same, same knowledge for you to uh, maybe handle these cases, right? So at this point, I want us to be very, very open-minded and approach it in a very practical manner, relating it with whatever that is happening in our day-to-day -day activities, okay? So now about control environment. What will entail control environment, my good students? You'll, far, you'll find that basically this uh, refers to the overall attitude, awareness, and actions for the management regarding the ICS and its importance in the entity. So uh, basically, it's uh, just uh, what you're referring to as uh, the, of course, where we are operating. Overall, uh, let me put this down so that you can also master it correctly. So I think that basically control environment basically entails, or rather refers to the overall attitude. This refers to the overall attitude, refers to the overall attitude, uh, awareness, overall attitude, talk about awareness, overall attitude, awareness, and actions, and uh, actions for the management, and actions for the management and actions for the management regarding the ICS and its importance to the entity. So basically, this is a water control environment. It says you are talking about the overall attitude, awareness and the actions for the management regarding the ICS and the uh, importance to the entity. Because many a times at this point you'll uh, find that uh, uh, where we are operating, it will, matter a lot. it will matter a lot. Say for example, you are in an industry or rather you are in an office whereby guys are just doing their own things without following any form of guidelines. Say for example, let me look at this case, uh, maybe uh, a company has set a policy that every person, uh, or rather the time, the reporting time is at uh, 8.30 a.m., right? The reporting time is at 8.30 a.m., whereby company A, they have set a case whereby, so long as you just come at 8.30, you're just okay. Maybe at this point, you're having this factor whereby when you come, you record it on a book. You record on a book. Mm-hmm. Then I'm having another company, Company B. They have stated that at this point, probably reporting time is 8.30 a.m. But when you come in this case, it's not a matter of recording on the book, but you clock in. So between the two companies, if I may ask this question practically, which one do you think they will have effective control of the reporting time from, of their employees? You'll find that uh, traditionally, I could have just come at 9 a.m. Reporting time is uh, 8.30. Reporting time is uh, 8.30. By this point, probably I just report at 9 a.m. And uh, in this case, what I'm going to do, of course, in the book is to record my own timing. Is to record my own timing. Is to record my own timing. Say, I'll put it at, say, like, uh, I'll put it, I've, I've come at 8.30. But in reality, probably I've reported at 9.00. So you'll find that uh, this is a disadvantage to this system. And therefore, this control environment, the overall attitude of the employees will be like, I can come to work at any given point in time and record the, probably uh, I've, uh, I, I report uh, as if I reported earlier on. But for clock-in system, the attitude will be like, uh, if I go late to work, I might be having issues because remember at this point you are clocking in you are clocking in probably using the system that has been set in place uh, many times you'll find that uh, guys might go and uh, of course there's that aspect of thumbprint whereby it will scan the time that you reported to work so uh, you find that uh, with this form of a system of a clock in system guys will be like uh, if I go to the job late I might be having a lot of issues because it's going to record the exact time 
that I have reported compared to this other one whereby I'll be having an attitude that I can still, I can still probably, uh, I can still uh, probably evade or rather in this case I can uh, steal the time of the company. So you'll find that uh, basically control environment refers to that overall attitude, awareness, talk about activities for the management regarding the ICS and importance to the entity. I've given you a good example in relation to what? In relation to, uh, in relation to reporting time, in relation to, in rep uh, to reporting time, in relation to reporting time. So after we have uh, noted uh, that one, the other key element will be aspect of our control activities. Talk about number two is control activities. Number two is uh, control activities control activities mm -hmm. number two is control is control activities so what will control activities uh, refer to as my good students here through about control activities mm -hmm. control activities basically you'll find that uh, uh, basically control activities it refers to those policies and procedures uh, this uh, refers to policies and procedures this refers to policies and procedures. This refers to, of course, uh, policies and uh, procedures. Policies and uh, procedures. Policies and uh, procedures. Uh, in addition to control environment. In addition. In addition to control environment. In addition to control environment. In addition to control environment. Which the management has established which the management which the management has established which the management which the management has established which the management has established which the management has established to ensure that nothing goes wrong to ensure to ensure that nothing goes wrong 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 and that the entity's objectives are achieved and that the entity's objectives and that the entity's objectives the entity's objectives are achieved are achieved are achieved are achieved very important to note that uh, basically control activities, remember, is uh, much different from the environment that we've created, right? Control activities, basically, we're looking at uh, basically uh, policies and procedures in addition to control environment, which the management has established to ensure that nothing goes wrong and uh, that uh, the entity's objectives are achieved. Such policies might include authorization procedures, whereby at this point, of course, uh, uh, maybe uh, whenever we are talking of uh, uh, talking of uh, maybe uh, issuing out a petty cash, there's that one person who is known to sign this petty cash for it to be for it kind of uh, to be affected. There's this person who maintains the petty cash, so you'll find that uh, aspect of uh, the person who authorizes the petty cash to be given is a whole different person. So this is uh, basically uh, talk of. Uh, authorization procedure that we've instituted talk about maybe segregation of duties whereby a person writing the petty cash is so different from the person signing the petty cash and is so different from the person authorizing the petty cash to be issued these are basically segregation of duties that you're talking about the key element maybe you're talking about uh, restricting physical access to access and records not any other person can just go to uh, uh, maybe access the bank statement of the firm not any other person can just use the motor vehicle of the farm. Not any other person can just be allowed to go to the store or the farm. So all these are aspects of uh, activities that we are instituting within our, within our environment. Recall, it is so different with control environment. The control environment is basically the attitude and awareness that you've created. Whereas control activities, basically those are procedures and policies that you're setting in place. This is the specific person who's supposed to do this and this and this. These are guys who are supposed to do this and this. Before you do this, you must be having these uh, clearance level. 
So all these aspects are what you're terming them as what? As a control, control activities, control activities, control activities. Now, uh, the other key element that uh, also we should also be talking about uh, at this point, you'll find that uh, it is a what you normally term it as a number three uh, environment or rather element that is of course uh, risk assessment and management risk assessment risk assessment and the management which is also very very key at uh, our case risk assessment and the management uh, that is a uh, very very important also to understand whereby in this case uh, you'll find that uh, is a process of identifying situations and events that may prevent the organization from achieving its goals right so about uh, basically uh, uh, a process of identifying situations and events that may prevent the organization from achieving its uh, goals. That is, of course, a business risk assessment and coming up with mitigating measures to address to address the risk. Because if you can recall, when we started, we say that uh, uh, when you are looking at uh, risks, we say that uh, we'll always be having this form of uh, risks. That is, of course, uh, audit risk and uh, business risks. I think we had analyzed this one very, very clearly earlier on, where we mentioned that uh, business risk will be as a result of our operation, whereby you can have operational risk, you can have uh, financial risks, you can have uh, compliance risks. These are risks that will affect what? My business directly. Not like audit risk. Uh, talk of uh, businesses, these are basically risks that will affect us directly, where we are talking of uh, financial risks. There is that I'm not, I'm not going to be given certain credit facilities simply because probably I've not attained a certain credit period or rather certain uh, credit, uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, talk of, uh, I've, I've not as, as, as attained a certain uh, maybe credit level. Talk about uh, compliance risks. Compliance risks are simply the risk that I might fail to comply with the set regulations within my uh, industry that I'm operating in. Talk about aspect of, of course, uh, that is, of course, we talked of uh, uh, operational risks. These are just risks, of course, that might occur at any given point during operation. Say, like I'm uh, having loss of uh, maybe uh, uh, a big uh, loss of a key supplier or a key customer. These are operational risks that you're talking about. Okay, so uh, when you are talking about uh, the aspect that you are referring to as a uh, uh, risk assessment and management, that's what we are saying, that uh, it is a process of identifying situations and events that may prevent the organization from achieving, from achieving, from achieving its goals. Uh, that is, of course, uh, business risk management and coming up with mitigating measures to address the risks. Very important to note, very important to note. Now, after we've uh, talked of uh, risk assessment and management, that should take us to element of ICS number four, which we are referring to as a information system and communication. It will also be very important for us to understand this concept clearly. So under this, basically, you'll find that uh, information system consists of uh, infrastructure that is hardware components, uh, software, people, data, and process that convert raw data into a meaningful information. So you'll find that uh, a good information system will ensure that uh, only valid transactions are processed. Transactions are processed and recorded at their proper amounts as well as a cutoff procedure is applied correctly. These are what you are referring to as information systems and communication, very important to note. Finally, amongst our elements, we normally tend to talk of mon monitoring which is very important and very key to understand. So when you are talking of monitoring, basically, my good students, you are looking at uh, the process of assessing the quality of the ICS over time to determine its effectiveness and taking corrective action. I repeat the statement again. You are saying that this is a process of assessing the quality of the ICS over time to determine its effectiveness and taking corrective action. I should make sure that whatever that actually we are doing at this point in time is effective. That these ICS that we've instituted, actually they are going to assist us to detect 
material error and frauds so at this point that should be very very important to note if uh, that would be very very important for us to do or for us to note so once we have these elements of ICS my good students it will be very important also for us to understand the characteristics or rather features of a good ICS of this I'm going to handle this in our next session. Thank you so much guys and let us meet in the next session.